Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today we're going to do the front brakes on my Honda CRV, and this model year is uh, 2017 to 2021. Okay, those are the model years that this covers. So, uh, tools that I'm going to use are uh, I've got a disc caliper tool. Um, this is a four-inch C-clamp, which you can use. I would get a five-inch if you. Uh, It'd be easier with a 5-inch C-clamp. Um, braking bars. Big braking bar. Medium-sized braking bar. If you don't have one, you can use a ratchet. Uh, but it's really... Uh, some of these are kind of heavy, so it's better to have a braking bar. Uh, I do have a ratchet. I uh, didn't really use the ratchet so much. Then uh, torque wrench. So I have two different torque wrenches here. Um, one larger, one smaller. They are both adjustable. Then I used a impact bit. This is a 19 mil. Um, then I used a 14 mil bit and uh, just a 19 mil regular bit just while I was working on it. Um, I use anti seize compound. A lot of people are afraid of anti seize compound. Uh, anti seize compound is basically just to prevent it from rusting together and seizing in position. So it's not a big deal. You can torque with anti seize compound. You don't use a lot of it. You just put a little bit on. It coats the threads. It just keeps it from seizing. Right? Simple, good stuff. Um, brake lube. This is uh, ceramic. Uh, silicone brake lubricant from Permatex. Um, this is a different one that, that I've used before, but I really like it because it's got a brush, so that's nice. Uh, release all or WD-40 is really handy. Uh, small wire brush is really handy. Uh, I've got an impact gun, so I use that to take the wheels off. That's the only thing I use it for. You don't need one, but they're nice. Uh, long Phillips bit. Uh, mini sledge is handy. Disc brake cleaner. If you don't get the ceramic coated discs, you'll have to clean them with disc brake cleaner. Um, I wear safety glasses when I'm pounding the small uh, screw that holds the, uh, the disc in. And then, just to make it easy to take it off, I use my uh, impact driver in reverse to pull that uh, tiny little screw off. And that's that. That's all the tools that you really need. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some bricks and I'm going to chalk the rear wheels so that they don't go anywhere. Your car can't roll anywhere. Now, right behind your mud flap, right behind the tire or in front of the tire in the back, you can see there is a flange here. And that flange that sticks down, that's your jack point. So, we're going to put our jack right up under that flange and it's going to be supported there on both sides of the cup of my <clears throat> if you don't have an air impact driver um, before you jack your tires up you should use a braking bar and a 19 mil socket and what you're going to do is you're just going to loosen these up so just loosen it up, you know, three quarters of a turn to half a turn, right? Because if you don't do this and you jack your car up, you won't be able to take them out. Your tires will just turn. So next we're going to jack up the car so that the uh, wheels are off by an inch or so on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our axle stand and we're going to put it under a frame member so you can see that's part of the uh, frame there okay and you can see right here it's got the hook at the front so that's a good solid part of the frame so what you want to do is put it back there and then just in case your jacks uh, fail on you your axle stands will pick up the weight okay for safety all right, so now you see I've turned the wheel out and that way it'll allow you to have better access to the brakes and we are going to remove the lug nuts. Yeah. 
If your wheel is stuck, give it a good shot. You can kick it and then take it off. Mine comes right off nice and easy. <clears throat> so we're going to use a braking bar and a 14 mil socket. And they're a little tight. The bigger the braking bar, the easier it is to take them off. So once they're loose, they'll actually come out really easily. I don't really have a big enough uh, C-clamp for this. This is a four inch C-clamp. So it'd be better if you had a bigger one. So what I'm gonna do to make this so that it's a little easier to pop the discs out, I'm gonna put this in here. Right, I'm gonna clamp that on. I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze. So right now I'm actually pushing on the pad and you see how it moved there? Give it a little squeeze and it's just loosening it up a little bit. So now I take my caliper and pull it out pretty easily. Okay, so here's your caliper. I'm just gonna set it here for now. Here's your two brake pads. They have springs on them so that they push back out. So you can see my pads are really quite good, but the dealership said, oh no, you gotta get yours done right away. So, here's the squealer, right? So I have a good half a centimeter of pad left before I actually have to change these. Now, there's two sides to your pads, right? So you have to look at the thickness of the other pad and compare it. So the thickness of this pad is a little thinner, so I probably have, let's say, three uh, millimeters left, maybe four millimeters before I have to change it. So, still really good shape. I could probably get another six months out of these, no problem. Now, you can push the caliper piston back in. Uh, don't hit the oil bolt at the back. So, right here, this is your oil bolt. So you don't want to hit that when you're doing this. So you can put this in here and wind it in and that will push it back, right? Now the problem is you're not really centered, so it's better to center it and that way it pushes your piston back evenly. So if you have the money and you can buy a tool, there's a caliper tool that you can use. And that's what I have is a pro point. It's from Princess Auto. It's kind of a weird looking thing. So. Just kind of turn it in, slide it in, put the cup in, right? And then you want to. Tighten this up. Oops. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this, and turn this one, and slowly but surely, and you have to go slow with these because you're actually forcing the uh, brake fluid backwards through the system. So you just slowly put it in. Don't put too much pressure on it. Gradually turn it back. Check that your boot is in good shape still here. Your rubber boot goes around the piston. Make sure that's not being pinched or, you know, getting sideways or anything. So we're gonna push it back pretty much until it stops. You start to feel some resistance, and then you just stop. It's gonna take this piston, this caliper, and we're just going to move it out of the way and put it on, rest it on an axle stand over here. Alright, so this is your caliper mount, so you got to pull these two bolts off, and you'll need a bigger braking bar and a 17 mil, or sorry, it's actually a night. 19 mil socket and they're in there pretty tight so 
That's why you need a big braking bar. <laughs> okay. Once again, once you have them loose, they should come out relatively easily. Okay, these two bolts. Then you take this whole thing out. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to clean these and re-grease them. All right, so when you buy your brake pads, sometimes your brake pads come with these caliper slides. So if you buy good brake pads, they'll come with the brand new caliper slides. So you can take the old caliper slides out, just pull them off and push the new ones in, make sure that they're the exact same way. Or if yours are in really good shape and you don't want to uh, change them, or if you bought cheaper brake pads and they didn't come with these, then you're going to have to reuse them. So I'm going to show you just like putting new ones in is really easy. You just pop these old ones out and put new ones in. Um, if you are going to reuse them, this is how you do it. So get like some shop towels or something and uh, clean all the grease and crap out of it. All right. And I also have this little wire brush that uh, I used for all these sort of jobs. I'm just going to get a good clean, get all of the leftover debris and crap out I'm using them. Now, right here I have a Permatex silicone ceramic brake lube. It's uh, like a brake grease. And this is a, a different product that I had before. So this stuff is orange and it's got ceramic uh, material in it, so they say. So we're going to give these a, a fair bit of lubricant. Like, we're not going to overdo it. But, you know, we're going to make sure that they've got lots on there. Yep, all the sides. All right, so that's the finished product. Just like that. One more thing, okay. one more thing. We gotta pull these out. So right here, there's these rubber boots and you have to peel the rubber boots back. And then you can pull this right out. And sometimes they're a little tight. So you can turn it a bit and pull it out. So this one, has this little bit of a locking thing on it and that fits I believe that's at the top so anyway put that back in the same way you can see there's hardly any grease left on this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same grease and we're gonna oops that's too much <laughs> we're gonna spread it on a lot thinner than that okay. and we're gonna get a bunch right down at the end right at the tip and then just push that back into the boot push it all the way back in here and then it should move a lot smoother okay. now clean off the excess so these boots can get air in them so what you want to do set it down push it back all the way push this in all the way and then set your boot and make sure your boot is set all the way around same to the other one so now with everything out of the way we're going to take off our disc now if you want to reuse your discs you have to take out the screw which is kicking around here somewhere where is it there it is. And you can put a bolt here and a bolt here and you can crank them in until it pops the disc off. If you're not reusing your disc, you can hammer it out and it's real easy. Well, before we do that, we're gonna put a little bit of WD-40 or release all in this case around all these, around the hub and around where that screw is. 
So right there. Now, I'll let that sit for a while. And to take the screw out, it's difficult. So what we do is put on our safety glasses, get our hammer and our screwdriver bit. And we're gonna give that a couple of swift shots. I use my impact driver on reverse and just pop that right out. So easy. So easy. All right. So now I'm going to take a rotor out. Now my rotor isn't seized on, which is amazing. But if it is seized on, you give it a good shot, right? You can just hammer it and it loosens right up and then you can take it off. All right, so if you need to put bolts in, you can grab some bolts and give it a good push. Crank it around. I've got the wrong kind of bolts here, but it's just to kind of show you. So. See, and there you go. Wow, it does work. I clean all this up with the shop tail too. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to use some anti seize compound. And I'm actually going to put some anti seize compound around here just a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit on here. I'm actually going to thin that out and spread it around a little bit. Just because it rusts on here, I'm just going to spread that on a little bit thinner. So put a little bit of anti-seize compound on that, put a little bit of anti-seize compound on your lug nuts. Okay. If your brake rotor isn't ceramic coated, it'll have oil on it and you need to clean that up. And use brake parts cleaner for that. So just give it a good shot, flip it over, give it another shot in the back, and then I use shop towels. and. I dry these off. So let's take all the oil off of it. All right, nice and clean. So here's the hole. So you've got to line up your hole for your brake rotor. That push that all the way in. Put a little any seize compound on that spot. Put a little any seize compound on your bolt. And we're just gonna shoot that in. So if you take this off and you can't get that out, you can actually drill it out. So that's fine. You can drill it out and you don't actually need it. It's just there for assembly, just to make your life easier. And it's actually easier when you're putting it back together. So I, uh, I use it to put them back together. Now we can slide our caliper mount bracket back in and that just sits there. Our two caliper mounting bracket bolts. We're gonna put just a touch of anti-seize compound on both of those. You don't need a lot, just a little. Okay. So you'll have to, to get this to line up. You just have to jiggle it around, lift it up a little bit so that you can start your threads. Once you do that, then they'll go in really easily. So you need your 19 mil socket and your adjustable torque wrench is set to 100 pounds. Okay, 100 foot pounds that is. So right, make sure you get a good reading. 
The brake pads are a little trickier to get in. Now, remember, it's on an angle that follows the rotor and the squealer, which is the squealer, is at the top up here. So let's try to put this in. Oh, and these things just rest on the outside of your caliper mount, right? So you just kind of set that in and slide it in place. Okay, and those springs will try to push it back out. But that's it, they just slide in on your caliper uh, mounts that you greased. So once again, put so line it up here. Like I said, sometimes these can be a little tricky. There we go. And once they're in, they'll sit like that. So, your uh, squealer's up here, right? You don't have a squealer on this one, right? There's no squealer on the outside pad. So there's two different pads. There's an inside pad and an outside pad. Both the outside pads look the same. The inside pad, uh, the squealer's at different ends, um, right? One for left and one for right. So make sure your squealer's at the top. If the squealer's at the bottom, it's for the other side. <laughs> okay, so put that in. When you put your caliper back in, make sure you unwind your brake hose so it's nice and smooth. And then what you do is you just push this on and it just slides in, right? Sometimes you have to push the pads in a little bit. So if your piston is pushed back all the way, then it slides over really easy. Now, we have to put the caliper mount bolts in, or the caliper slide pin bolts. And the caliper slide pin bolts also I give them a little touch of this anti-seize compound. And this is a new anti-seize compound that I have. This one's got copper in it. I don't know why, but anyway, that's what they had gone from gray to brown so I'm just gonna pop this in so what happens here too is when you put your caliper back in sometimes these pins are out like they slide out so you have to push them in both of them all the way to push to get your caliper in so the caliper up move this around until it lines up again the bottom move that around till it lines up then they should thread in really easily by hand. Okay. And then they are you know, where's my there it is. They're 14 mil. So you get your I have another uh, torque wrench for this. And this one is set for 37 foot pounds. So, crank that up, get that all the way in. Okay, so they're in and torqued, your pads are in, your caliper's on, your caliper mounting brackets are torqued, your caliper slide pins are torqued, so everything's on. And you just got to put your wheel on. Nice and simple. So get your axle stand that you use to support your caliper out of the way. So while you're doing this, check to make sure that your boots are in all the way, right? Check your brake hose. This is your brake hose. Make sure that that all looks good, okay? This is your ABS sensor wire. Make sure that that sensor wire goes all the way back here and that all looks good. It's not broken. This is your stabilizer link here. Okay, make sure the boots, there's like a rubber boot on those. Make sure the boots look good, top and bottom. All right, there, it's back in there. Make sure they're tight, they're not loose. Make sure everything looks good. Then over here, this is your tie rod end. Once again, it has a rubber boot on it. So check that out. Make sure that looks good. Make sure the other end looks good. And then here's your axle, your drive axle here and that also has a boot and 
make sure that that boot doesn't have any cuts in it or is leaking grease or anything. So that all looks good. And then your shock absorber, your McPherson strut. Okay, it has a spring here. And look at the, the shock itself and see if there's any oil leaking out of here. And if that is dry and there's no oil leaking out, no oil leaking down the shaft, and that's probably also good, all right? So everything looks good in here, and we're gonna put the tire back on. All right, so while you're rolling your tire back, just inspect in your treads to make sure that there's no nails or punctures or anything stuck in them. So I hand start all these. And push your tire in at the bottom, you can get the bottom ones and easier. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start these a little bit at a time okay, until the tire sets all the way back properly and flat. And then I'm just going to give it a couple of shots. Tighten it up and then we'll torque it after we drop it. So remove your axle stands. Slowly with the jacks. And remove the wheel chocks. Right. And tighten the lug nuts to 80 pounds. Okay, make sure. Okay, now remember to pump up your brakes before you get going and uh, take it out for spin. See how you did. All right, so hopefully this video helped you out a little bit, um, walked you through the process. If you have any comments, please leave the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, feel free. I do a lot of woodworking and, and uh, home improvement and, and just simple car maintenance on my channel. Um, and what else? Oh, share. Feel free to share my videos if you want on YouTube or other platforms. Um, that would be great. That helps out the channel a lot. And thanks for watching and have a great day. Good luck on your repairs. Um, have a couple of beers and uh, it's just a nice, relaxing afternoon job. All right. uh, thanks for watching.